Good morning, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here and as one of the, the first events in this Congress to make a presentation of what I believe is the most important award. And this is the Frontline Heroes Award, which this year is being presented to Her Excellency, the First Lady of Zambia, Dr. Christine Kasebasata. I'm very pleased to be presenting the Frontline Heroes Award today, particularly because it's about women's health. Women's health is a hugely important global issue, more particularly when one talks about women's sexual and reproductive rights and their health. And that's the field where Christine works so hard. It's a field which I feel really strongly about and one which needs to gain greater prominence and more work done around the world. Christine isn't your typical first lady. She's also an obstetrician and gynecologist with three decades of experience saving women's lives. She isn't afraid to get her hands dirty. She's delivered babies, performed emergency obstetric surgery, and prevented the transmission of HIV from mother to child. Prior to becoming Zambia's first lady, Dr. Kaseba Sato was a distinguished lecturer and head of the obstetrics and gynecology department at their only medical school, the University Teaching Hospital in Lusaka. She's gained international recognition as a strong advocate for increasing access to quality obstetric care and for preventing mother-to-child transmission of HIV. She's passionate about helping Southern Africa to meet MDG5, to reduce maternal mortality by 75%. She's demonstrated exemplary leadership in the public-private partnership, Saving Mothers, Giving Life, which is focused on reducing worldwide maternal mortality with Merck for Mothers, USAID, and other partners. Dr. Kaseba Sata recently launched an ambitious family planning campaign that aims to increase access to contraceptives in Zambia from 33% of women to 59% within seven years. She recognizes that women, when women and families are able to plan how many children to have and when to have them, they are healthier, wealthier, and better able to contribute to Zambia's burgeoning economy. Dr. Kaseba Sata is perhaps best known today as a leader in the fight against cervical and breast cancer in Africa. Her involvement has been instrumental in building Africa's first cancer hospital and in implementing the see and treat cervical cancer prevention methodology which uses household vinegar, acetic acid, to effectively screen for precancerous lesions, which can then be treated in the same session by freezing with cryotherapy. That's a dramatic advance in, in managing cancer in Africa, cancer of the cervix. She's also a leading advocate for the Pink Ribbon, Red Ribbon Initiative, which addresses breast and cervical cancer among women. She's chairperson of the African First Ladies Against Breast and Cervical Cancer, a forum that takes a leading advocacy role in raising awareness and promoting funding for breast and cervical cancer prevention and treatment. Cervical cancer is the leading cause of cancer deaths amongst women in Southern Africa. That's a frightening statistic. Approximately 88% of all cancer death, cervical cancer deaths occur in the developing world. And by 2030, their share will grow to 98% of all cases. And it's a particular problem amongst women with HIV. And it doesn't help if we save their lives by giving them AIDS treatment 
is that all that's going to happen in the end is they're going to die from cervical cancer, which has been neglected. So this, for us today, has become a hugely important topic. Cervical cancer can be effectively and affordably prevented. And when diagnosed early, it can be cured. However, in developing countries, less than 5% of women have ever had a pap smear, the test used to diagnose cervical cancer and other diseases. So as a result, many women don't enter care until they have advanced cervical cancer disease, which is extremely painful, very difficult to treat, and frequently, almost always, leads to death. Dr. Kaseba Sate is now also working on bringing an affordable HPV vaccine to Africa. That's the human papillomavirus, a vaccine against that, which is the agent which is the leading cause of, of cervical cancer. This is a vaccine currently manufactured by, by Merck and GlaxoSmithKline. It's an expensive vaccine. It requires three doses. Typical price is, is around $100 a dose. Those two companies recently announced that they're bringing the price of that vaccine to below $5 a dose in developing countries with greatest need. And so Dr. Kaseba Sate is busy planning a nationwide rollout of that vaccine in Zambia so that every girl and young woman will have that prevention for cervical cancer in the future. That's, that's an astounding project. So what you've heard, what you've heard is the story of an amazing woman, and I'd like to, you to join with me in giving a very warm welcome to Her Excellency, Dr. Christine Kasebasata. Thank you, Brian, for those uh, nice words. They were good to the ear. And I'm just glad that um, now no one in this room will be able to see how red my ears are, because I'm blushing. <laughs> I'm deeply honored and humbled to have been considered for the Frontline Hero Award. And I consider this as a very rare privilege. And you can imagine how nervous I am here standing in front of this uh, great crowd. And I think it's just important that before I forget what I'm supposed to be saying, before my tongue gets tongue-tied, at least permit me to thank GBC Health for the good work that you are all doing in various countries to tackle HIV, to tackle malaria, and to tackle tuberculosis, and to prevent uh, blindness you are indeed making our world a better place, and we are deeply appreciative of your efforts. It's wonderful and exciting to stand up here and receive this uh, precious uh, gift. I'm very excited, partly, because I know this award is a manifestation that the Global Business Coalition on Health, that the global community, the business community, the private sector, has heard the message about maternal health and is keeping a radar on what is going on on women and children's health. I accept this award and offer a special salute to everyone that has contributed um, to what I've been doing for the past 30 years as I've been tackling women's health. I pay a special tribute to the unsung heroes and there are many of them. I salute the many voices that continue to highlight the plight of many defenseless and vulnerable women and children, especially those in Africa, 
and other needy countries. The burden of disease in sub-Saharan Africa bears the face of women, girls, and children, and accounts for more than 70% of all deaths worldwide. I'm constantly haunted by the many faces of women and children who have succumbed to the cold hands of death uh, from preventable diseases and conditions because of lack of access to health services, because of the inequalities that continue to subject women to social exclusion and social injustices. I'm constantly haunted by the ones who died because the global and local communities did not invest meaningfully and adequately to ensure they survive yet another day. I am concerned, and I call on everyone to be concerned that many more women will continue to die, that many more women will die today and tomorrow from highly preventable and treatable conditions while we continue paying lip service and fail to walk the talk. I have experienced the anguish of losing a patient from preventable conditions uh, arising as a result of complications of pregnancy. I have seen the face of pain, the face of women. I have seen the pain on their faces as they lost their babies in childbirth. And I know how it feels to lose a loved one. I have lived it and I have seen it. For them and many more women who suffer disabilities, and social injustice, I soldier on, praying and hoping that one day, most of these tragedies will be things of the past. As a leader and advocate of women, girls, and children's health, I'm more resolute to continue advocating for affirmative action at national, regional, and global level in health-related issues. I therefore wish to dedicate this award, this prize to the well-being of women and children in Africa, especially Sub-Saharan Africa. <laughs> With the support of alliances in this room, and I see many in this room, I see public and private, I see academia and civil society, I see communities and individuals. I know that the future is bright. My hope is literate. Even though I'm being acknowledged as a hero today, I have not been alone in this fight. I'm greatly indebted to the contributions from the private sector, without whom most of these programs in Zambia would not have been successful. I've had the chance of working with some GBC members, like MEIC, and other members of the Pink Ribbon, Red Ribbon Initiative. I've had the chance of working with Mopani Mines and other public-private partnerships, including saving mothers giving lives and others involved in developing and scaling up of cancer screening and treatment in Zambia. We are making strides in Zambia in reaching out to the poor and vulnerable women in society. And as a country, I'm proud to say that with your commitment, and your cooperation. We have already screened over 100,000 women, and this is no mean achievement in any African country. <laughs> Thanks to you, we are about to start vaccinating 50,000 girls with HPV vaccine. And many private organizations like Lumwana Mines have made my resolve to fight all forms of gender-based violence attainable. Working with government, they are setting up one-stop centers and self-shelters for victims of gender-based violence to facilitate holistic supportive care to victims. And I appeal to all of you to be more involved and invest in family planning. I am confident that together we can make a difference. I'm confident that together we can bring smiles to many, fa to many faces. Together we can help many developing countries to achieve the MDG targets and set the stage for greater heights of achievements beyond 2015. Lastly, but uh, equally important, I would like to thank my incredibly supportive family and friends. 
I have here today my two daughters, Chilufia and Muelwa. Would you stand up, please? <laughs> I have my sisters, my young sisters, even though some may look older than me, <laughs> Sa <laughs> Sally and Leonora. <laughs> I've got some friends, uh, the minister's spouses, who have joined the fight with me. Me, ask them to stand up. To you, my family and friends, I would like to thank you for always believing in me. Your faith in me drives me to fight harder in making a difference in the lives of women and children. Let me end once again in thanking GBC Health, the Global Business Coalition for Health for this award. I will do my best to perform in a manner consistent with the merits of the award. And I ask you, I earnestly appeal to you to join me with the fight. Thank you very much.